Thank you for tuning in to Conversations with Collins. The views shared should in no way replace that of your physician, and the views of the host and her guests are that solely of the individual and are not endorsed by any businesses or organizations. Hello, fam. Welcome to another episode of Conversations with Collins. I am Dr. Sharice Collins. I'm a board certified OBGYN. And today I have some friends and what I would consider family with me. I'd like for you to meet the Millers, Rodney and Amy. If you'd like to tell everybody a little bit about yourselves. Well, his last name is Prather, first of all. Sorry. That, that's okay, I but apologize. I do like, no, I like to be in the Millers because then I'm a I think that was a first. I love it. Because <laughs> usually we get called the Prather family because Zoe's last name is Prather and his last name is Prather. So I really, I like that. Good, we, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone's met you, Amy, but would you like to recap who you are and what you do? Uh, yeah, my name is Amy Miller and I am a, I was a clinical social worker. Now I'm a life and relationship coach. Uh, we were in my office last time in Lafayette Square. Um, this is my husband, Rodney Prather. He's a school counselor, and he can take it from there. There's more? <clears throat> sure. There's a you're a school counselor. Say more. Uh, I'm a school counselor. You're also, you make beats. You're a hip-hop producer. Fair. Fair. I, I moonlight as a music producer. That is true. Good. Um, I don't know if I have a whole lot of other things to say <laughs> about myself, though. We'll get there. All right. We'll get there. What made you get into music? Um, I was always into music, I think. Um, my sister and I used to make... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, There's a story to this. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, my sister and I used to make, like, uh, you know, like Weird Al? We used to make parody songs like that when I was super young, 11, 12. And uh, matter of fact, I found recently the cassette deck, but not the cassette tape that goes in it. But um, yeah, so music's always been a thing. Um, when I was in college, I just stumbled upon music making and it just it just stuck with me. Mm -hmm. A friend bought me a uh, music program that we started playing with that was not intended to create music, but some kind of way we figured out how to do it with that program, so. Um, and it's just been with me ever since. And Amy, what about you? You have a music background as well. I do. Um, I'm a singer and I do not make music of any kind. Like I'm not to a songwriter. I know, <clears throat> I'm, I'm not a good songwriter. Really? Uh, I'm not, I'm not creative. I'm not and, as good as I would like to be, <laughs> but with practice. I'll I don't even want to practice because I'm not good at it. It doesn't go well, but, but I'm a good singer, so I stick with that. So I've been doing um, cover gigs for years and like bars and driveways and parties and stuff, wineries. Um, so we just do like cover songs. I un unfortunately or fortunately have quite a twang to my voice. So I end up sounding like, if I was on The Voice, they put me on Blake Shelton's team and I'd be <laughs> But it's just, it is what it is. I think it's fortunate, I think it's unique. It's not what people expect when I start singing, mm -hmm. I don't think. I don't expect it still. Mm -hmm. I'll be coming to watch. You should, yeah. But it made me think that, you know, you all have never collaborated or anything. He makes music, I tried. you sing. We did those jingles. Oh, true. <laughs> we, did, we did some jingles that... We did a couple jingles. That your friend Reese, mm -hmm. he wrote them and sent them to Rodney. They were like little kid. They, he, he had a little kid and we had a little kid. And yeah. uh, No Germs was one of them. I love it. And so he did the music recording and I did some backup vocals to Reese, what he sent. He's in Florida, right? I've never met him except on Facebook, but, uh, and then Zoe did like a little, little cameo. Mm -hmm. It's very cute. I don't know whatever happened to those, but that's the closest we've come to collaborating. Unfortunately. Is jingles. I would like to just like <laughs> while we're here putting that on the record. Oh, okay. Thank you, honey. Oh, okay. I'm, t I'm well, noting. I'm noting. On it. that note, you know, <laughs> they have, um, like Gracie's Corner and, you know, a lot of the... I just learned about this. Count uh, all the money, money, count yes, all the money, money. Yes, and there mm -hmm. is trap nursery rhymes. Mm -hmm. oh, yes, Zoe would love yes. that. Zoe loves the And they the have trap different <laughs> rap artists, you know, rapping on over the oh, uh, really? animations. But it's becoming a huge deal because people want their children of color to look mm -hmm. at, at people that look like them. Sure. And the children, like for our grandson, 
he won't pay attention to any of the other cartoons, but as soon as you put on the music and mm. he sees brown and black people on, mm -hmm. he stops. And he's just, you know, enamored mm. until the songs go off. And recently he started talking and now he will hum or say things that he's gotten from mm. these videos. So they're educational, but there's so many things that, and skills that you all have, right? In addition to you being a school counselor and you all having a small child that you're raising together. Mm -hmm. And just knowing you the way I do, your passion for education and people getting information, just like we're doing this, mm -hmm. right? So just a thought, as Rodney put things on the record here, <laughs> just a thought that, you know, maybe y'all should think more about collaborating. It doesn't have to be, you know, a hip hop or R&B song. Mm -hmm. It could be something along the lines of what you do, because people listen, but they want to listen the way they hear information, right? Which is mm -hmm. usually through music. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Which I did Thank not you. know about myself until probably college age or close to it, but I learned at that time that uh, it's via audio that I learned the best. Mm -hmm. And I think we're kind of seeing that with uh, Zoe mm -hmm. already. That mm -hmm. that's a way for her to pick up information. Yeah, I mean, that's why they taught us nursery rhymes, right? Mm -hmm. Like, do they stick in your mind so you can memorize things? But I, just but I it. think it's been proven over and over again that different cultures learn differently. Right. So, you know, when we talk about bad children or someone not being teachable, it's not that, it's mm -hmm. just that you haven't found the way to reach them, mm -hmm. right? But music is almost always a way to reach somebody. I say that to my kids all the time when they have uh, issues with their teachers. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, maybe they're not a bad teacher, but their learning style may not match your, or their teaching style may not match your learning style. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. For sure. So I just thought while we were mm -hmm. talking on the music tip, mm -hmm. that I'd just put that out there. Mm -hmm. Well, Zoe will be the songwriter. Yeah, I think she'll be into that real soon. That, well, she could write a song. She, she does write, write she songs. Did, she did write a song. She did write a song. We, re we recorded a song. <laughs> She recorded her first song recently, like a few weeks ago. Well, she maybe. She sings songs all the time, but she never mm -hmm. lets me record it. Maybe that's something that you include her on, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, she would like that. Yeah, something for grade age, grade school, elementary age children, because that's what she is. Mm -hmm. And she'll reach them on their level, on whatever you want her to Except talk about. Except she's talking about stuff that, she's talking <laughs> about grown people's stuff songs. Well, you and know. she beeps out, what she say? She beeps out. She'll leave a space. <laughs> She'll, she'll just be rapping or singing and she'll leave a space and she'll say, I left a space because that's where they have the grown up word. <laughs> I love it. Because she has the clean versions. So she, you know, she'll, she knows like, mm. like her version of Bodak Yellow, for example, she's loved since she was little. And she was the other day, like she just came out with it, but she doesn't understand the lyrics at all. Mm -hmm. And she, and it's the edited version. So there's lots of blanks and she just like leaves the blanks. She just leaves them like they're like their words. So now she does that when she's making up her own song. But I think that's awesome because she not cursing, but she knows how to cadence goes oh, and she where the words oh, should yeah. go. Right? She does. Her cadence is perfect. Well, let's talk about Zoe a little bit more. Okay. Well, we could talk about her, the, her, um, the birth process. I was going to say I thought that was interesting to talk about the fact that you got to be in all of my appointments. Mm which I think a lot of male partners, so I, correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of male partners don't attend all the appointments, no, right? No, as a matter of fact, I mean, it's been a trend, it's been a change, because when I mm -hmm. first came into practice, it was hardly ever any partners in the appointments unless it was an ultrasound. Mm -hmm. um, but now, the husbands get upset or any partner gets upset if they have to miss the appointments. Mm, and so okay. that's when I come in and I'm like, well, you know, it's a little bit harder for you to get here, right? Like you're not visibly pregnant, so your job may give you problems. Mm. So, you know, and I don't want you to have to use PTO to come mm. for these appointments. So because of that, I kind of bless them, right? I'm like, make the ultrasound appointments. Mm -hmm. I see you at delivery. If you want to be in on the visits and can't leave work, we'll FaceTime when I come um, in the room. Mm. So sometimes they'll be on That's FaceTime cool. and I just that be like, hey babe, what's like up? That. How you doing? Sorry you couldn't make it today. And then we go on with the visit. Mm -hmm. But no, when y'all had Zoe, it was different. It was just starting to turn. Mm -hmm. You know, where more men and more partners were wanting to be present at every visit. Mm -hmm. But you know, you know, with prenatal visits, not every visit has a lot going on. So unless it's something specific that the couple wants to talk to me about, mm -hmm. you know, there's still guys that are just like, I'm going to work. 
call me if it's a problem. Mm -hmm. I was so anxious at All Mine that I was glad that he was there because I I was so anxious and scared. Like if they had any brief hard time finding like the heartbeat, like I would just be like freaked the fuck out and like something bad. So it was very helpful for him to be there for that. And I agree with you. There are people that do suffer from anxiety that I think their partners calm them down. Mm -hmm. Not only do they calm them down, but you know, there's something we call pregnancy brain where you just don't remember things and the husband or partner will be their brain. It's like, I told you three things and Mm -hmm. they'll come Mm -hmm. up with the three things that they were supposed to ask me because the patient gets into a conversation and forgets the things that they talked about before they came. So Mm -hmm. a lot of times that's the partner's job is to remember the things that they need to talk to me about. And then I encourage people to put notes in their phone. You know, Mm -hmm. if you're Mm -hmm. on monthly visits and there's four weeks between our visits, then put your notes in your phone, your questions in your phone, so then that way you're not searching Mm -hmm. in that time that we're in the room together. Whether it's a night in, or a night out. Meeting new friends or a date night with my boo. Just know when you see me, I'll be wearing Denise Lee. Like we talked to you about last time, how the mom feels unsupported a lot of times the birth of the first child is often the time when relationships fall apart. Um, it's often that. Yes. It's that like, and so one thing that I coach people to say, um, men to say specifically in that dynamic is to say like, what can I take responsibility for? Not mm. what can I do to help? Mm-hmm. Not like, what do you need me to do? But like, what can I take responsibility for? Meaning like, that's your job. Like right. that's the stuff that you're gonna do and I'm not gonna think about it. And on the opposite side of that, I'll tell the females like, you need to open your mouth. Mm-hmm. Stop thinking he knows oh, he don't what know. you he doesn't want. Know anything. He has no idea. <laughs> he doesn't know anything. So if you want something done and he's not doing it, instead of getting mad and blowing up on him, mm-hmm. Tell him, open your mouth. Mm-hmm. You know what? You sitting over here playing a game. I need you to do this. Mm-hmm. And to your point, and I'm going to need you to do this from this point forward. This is your this job. This is yours. Mm-hmm. But we don't do that. And so we have this internal struggle of mm-hmm. feeling alone and like no one understands how much help I need. And I just feel invisible. Mm-hmm. But we're making the problem worse mm-hmm. ourselves by also not communicating because we're resentful that he should already know. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I think that it's real important, you know, to your point, because you, nothing was said. You said, it's my child. I'm doing this for my child. So it was light work, right? But if it were somebody else's child, my attitude would be completely different. It would have been work. But most men don't have that attitude. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? Like, I'm just curious what your, what your thoughts are about that. Um, I think it's multifaceted. I think part of it is society, this society in America Mm -hmm. and how misogynistic it is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, I mean, look at what's happening right now, you know, with all of the political moves that are being made. It's almost as if they want to go back 60 years, right? Like literally or longer. I was going to say more. And, you know, there are a lot of men particularly that are resentful because they feel that women are taking the jobs and they can't get a job and they're lonely. They may not have a girlfriend and all the blame is going elsewhere, but all of that is coming to them from media and Mm. from our society and what we say you're supposed to be. And instead of making our own pathways, we try to get on a pathway that's meant for us to follow. Mm -hmm. And that's very difficult, I think, Mm -hmm. because for men, you're supposed to be strong and protect your family and traditional, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the way America is. But that's not our society anymore, right? Like, Right. You're not fighting people that's trying to break in your homes on the regular like we were years ago. And things have changed <clears throat> quite a bit. The jobs have changed quite a bit. It doesn't require for you to be so strong because we're not doing all of these hard working, you know, jobs, trade positions. There are people that do them, but the majority is everybody mm-hmm. wants to go work in an office, right? Or do something that doesn't require manual labor. Mm-hmm. So that takes away part of the identity, too, because part of a man's identity in this country is providing and work Mm -hmm. and that dynamic has changed then I think what we think in general of 
what a woman is, what a man is, and now there's transgender in the, L the entire LGBTQ plus community. So now even our thoughts of what mm -hmm. you're supposed to, what your role mm -hmm. in a relationship, in a family, at work, whatever, all the roles have changed. So now you're becoming a chameleon because you're trying to figure out what you're supposed to be in each situation. Is mm -hmm. it politically correct? Is it not? Like it's all these nuances to society now that we didn't have before. Right. So I think it leads to a lot of confusion for people. And then lastly, it's of course where you come from. I think parenting is huge. If you see loving parents, if you see parents that spend a lot of time with their children, then you expect that when you have children. If you were a latchkey kid and your parents were always at work or you were always with someone else, then that's your idea of parenting, right? So I think a lot of it is what you see, what you've been told, and the amount of love and affection that was seen. And I think that's why some men are very open <clears throat> and loving and affectionate and some aren't. And mm -hmm. some can be opened up because it's there. They just were told mm -hmm. to hide that. Mm -hmm. Tired of struggling to find your way. Feeling like nothing is working. That ends now with the D-Bake Foundation. From getting your high school diploma to attaining your GED, but it doesn't stop there. From job placement and construction, coding, financial literacy and business skills, we are here, so you don't have to do it alone. Join us today at the d Bake Foundation. It's not the end. This is only the beginning. Originally, Zoe's mm. middle name was going to be Miller. Remember, we, we her name was, was going to be Zoe Miller Prather. I was into that. Yeah. My, but, my dad's family has women named Miller as mm -hmm. their first name. That's so dope. I was like, yeah, let's do it. But then his granny passed like two weeks before Zoe was born, and he was really close to her, and his mom was really close to her, and her name was Izella, which is a cool name. So yeah. that's how Zoe ended up with Zoe Izella instead. But I was also on board with, <laughs> and I totally understand people who hyphenate when they mm -hmm. get married, mm -hmm. or people who make up their own brand new last name when they start a new family. I don't think that's crazy either. Well, that's but, what I said. Society's changing so much, but. Mm -hmm. but there's still the cornerstones that are archaic I I and, just, and quite frequently misogynistic, right? Right. Yeah. Well, so my whole thing in life, period, all the time is, okay, but why, though? <laughs> it's like, okay, but why, though? Which is why, like, I can't really be mad that Zoe is so that way. That and she I wants to, Right. I you're like, well, why? Which I, think, which I think you should like, say why? bless you. For what? <laughs> What's it gonna do? I don't know why I feel strongly about bless you, and I think it's so rude when you have don't you say ever, bless you. Have you ever sneezed when nobody was around to bless you? <laughs> Are you all right? I'm all right. <laughs> okay. Well. But that's a minor example. But but I'm bro more broadly, there's so many things that people just do that like they're like, well, that's because that's just what you're supposed to. I'm like, but why though? Like, yeah. but why would I change? But I my think name? that's I think that's a lot of the <clears throat> relationship issues that we've been talking about too, right? right? Like, but people why though? do things just because they think sleep that's like, supposed right, to do. Right. Y'all sleep. And your partner snores. Why are you doing that? Why? Because right. you, you're supposed to sleep in the same bed. But why though? Right. Do you want to have sleep? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, you're right, and like we like we said, it's all a contract. It's all what these two mm -hmm. people are agree to, or in right. polygamy situations, what these mm -hmm. people agree mm -hmm. with. And I've just learned I don't judge any of it. I just want to help you where you are. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's not for if me you're to happy. do, right? If you're not happy, I'm judging. I don't judge. I just nudge, I'm judging. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, 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 I don't judge. judge. And nudge. I just I'll if I see you. that they're Actually. in a really bad relationship, because <laughs> all too often we see it so clear not just me i mean staff like you can see it written all mm -hmm. over the partner's I body bet. language when they I come bet. in mm -hmm. you know and the way he looks at her and that often. attitude and he's like what you say and you just mm. be like oh god this is not mm. a good relationship mm -hmm. and so in those I situations bet. they're already pregnant they're coming in you know mm. what i mean like i can't mm. you know so i don't judge i just nudge i suggest especially when they're together because if i say something to her and she goes home she might get in trouble 
Mm -hmm. I don't know the full details. Sure. But if he's with her and I can see the body language, then I can go, yo, bro. What is this? Yeah. You, you mm -hmm. want to talk about it? What's, what's bothering you? You came in today. You get to be included in the visit mm -hmm. whenever you mm -hmm. come. Your thoughts and feelings matter. I feel, I'm feeling this mm -hmm. today. And I'll bring them in. And, and they appreciate that because now they're having a conversation that's mediated. Mm -hmm. Right. Which they wouldn't have been able to happen without <clears throat> your presence. Absolutely. I had a telemedicine visit with a couple because I'm like, no, I need you both present to hear both of you say in front mm -hmm. of the other mm -hmm. what you're telling me, right? And so it, I think it was really productive. And by the end, they were at a place that they were nowhere near before because one wasn't listening. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just always yelling at me. I can't mm -hmm. hear, you know, and she's like, I'm not doing that. And I'm like, well, yeah, well, you are because I'm watching it. So, mm -hmm. you know, I was able to say, I wish I could video you right now Boom. and mm -hmm. turn it around and hit play because I don't think you understand where you are. Mm -hmm. And he does, which is why he's reaching out for help. Mm -hmm. So it was it was very interesting. And I wish I could do more couples things, but it's only certain situations and what I do, you know, that allows mm -hmm. me to go, OK, I need to talk to both of y'all. You know, but most of the time it's me giving her pearls and going, go home, have a discussion. And then I'll tell them if I think maybe they're in an unsafe relationship or a relationship where they might not be heard or, you know, it might be a clap back. I'll say, go home and blame me. Yeah. Say, Dr. Collins say said, go home no, and blame important. me. Like, Dr. Collins me said, I don't, I don't mind care. being the bad guy. Mm -hmm. Use me mm -hmm. to protect you. Right, right. Sometimes right. they'll come. They'll be like, "Well, she, you know, I'm she said that you that. that you said." Be like, uh, "I didn't say that." What though? When it's like blame, you know, like. I'm likely to do that. It, what to blame Stefan? <clears throat> yeah, don't do that. Get the conversation started. You know? mm -mm. So I would say, from this conversation, <laughs> what would you no, think would you. be the biggest takeaways that the two of you would have for couples? Communicate. With, yeah. Be honest. Yeah. Even yourself. when it's hard. Well, yeah, 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 First. yeah. And even when it's hard, because we've been through some hard stuff and, and had to talk through some hard stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, being being courageous and holding each other accountable for being your best self. And uh, I think with the kids thing, like sharing responsibilities in a really meaningful way, yeah. like he does way more stuff around the house than I do. And I'm at work more and I'm like she trying, works more. And so I'm trying to make like, more money yeah. for us and like I have a, I have a wider range where I can make more money doing different kinds of things and so you know he, he's real quick to pick up to pick up the slack but then he wants to sleep in in the mornings and so every morning like he like he's never the morning parent unless like I'm out of town or something um, and that works fine like there's no and if something stops working talk about it yeah, be like that it, was yeah. working but now it's not working so to your point about contractual like the, the contractual agreements you've made you know um a, a good friend of mine um jennifer and marcel sat down and made um they're getting married some friends of ours and they're they sat down and made agreements i and think like, that's, that's smart <clears throat> because then too. then you know what the expectations are and then you revisit them and, and then you, say, yeah, you can say well, well you did know this we've discussed this before right. not and if you should have known right and if it's not cool with you anymore then let's talk about what we could do instead and always revisit right. yep yeah right. and we've had to renegotiate all kinds of things in our relationship over the past seven years you know but and, if the, if in the front of our minds all the time is i love you you are my choice i choose you every day I don't want to do this without you, then we can move on. So what that. do we need to do? Right. What right. do we need to do? What works for everybody? So I'm hearing communicate, <clears throat> which I always say, open your damn mouth. Yeah. Tell them. But mm -hmm. communicate. I'm hearing be courageous mm -hmm. and be honest with yourself and them in mm -hmm. the communication. Make sure that you're actually agreeing to what the responsibilities are mm -hmm. in the relationship. And we do a lot of touch. We do a lot of non-sexual touch. I mm -hmm. think throw that Affection, one in there. Non-sexual like. touch. And then revisiting. Mm -hmm. Always revisiting and checking in on each other. Is this, are we still going the direction that we want to mm -hmm. go? And there's something that comes before the communication that's internal, I feel. Like self-reflection, self-awareness? Yeah. And I don't know really what to call it exactly but i think it matters that we were older when right. we 
Right. Came and we've had a lot of different other. relationships. And I've been married before, and I've been with women before, and I've been, you know, and he was like sort of permanently mostly single with some. Single my whole life. <coughs> you had some, some perpetual my, my whole 20s, I was single. So I had a lot of practice with different people of doing these kinds of things. And I think that matters too. As opposed to, you know, like I have a lot of friends that they've been together since high school. Stuff Which is like ridiculous because you don't know anything. And you're I not disagree. even a fully formed person. I disagree. If Marlon you stay and I on have the same, been together if you stay since on the, we were in high school. If you stay on the same page. But what we say, and I don't, we've, we've not always been on the same page, right? Because we're two individuals and we had to grow. Sure. Yeah. But we say we raised each other because we've been together like longer that. than we were with our parents. So when I people like are like, that. you know, how'd you get him to do, I didn't. Mm -hmm. I didn't. He did those things because they were his choice. and That's a different dynamic than most people who've been together since right. high school are working right. with them. Right. Most right. people who've been together since high school are not doing the growth together. Well, I don't know very many people that are still together since high school. There are a few couples that we went to high school with that are still together and seem to have very healthy relationships, mm -hmm. but I'm not in them, right? Well, and I get people when they're in crisis. So, right. So, so, right. Right. So I guess the people that I'm seeing who have been together since high school, a lot of times they're... They ha they're interested in exploring, they're resentful that they haven't been able to explore mm -hmm. other things in their lives or have other partners. They're like, you know. But it's true, like she said, <clears throat> it depends on the perspective of the people involved because I, like I say it all the time, and I feel like I say all the time that I say all the time. <laughs> But you do. I do too. Like I say all the time. We have we have our catchphrases. Yes. People do not grow <laughs> linearly. People don't grow like trees. People grow like vines on a fence. So you're gonna you're do fluid. all of this. You're fluid. So the chances that you're gonna do that with another person are so slim. But that doesn't mean you can't connect early. Well, I think you need to make sure that you leave room for leave room. individuals. That's what exactly what I was right. Say. You still mm -hmm. have to be an individual. Everything isn't going to be together. Right. So know, not being you, codependent. Right. Also right. put that on that list. Right. Of, right. On your right. You still have like, to be individuals to come <clears throat> together to make this relationship. We're a team. Which, we don't merge into a right. I, we didn't morph thing. into yeah. one person. Right. Exactly. We right. actually don't have that much in common in a lot of ways. Like in terms of like the stuff we like to do. Like I want to go like drink wine and talk on a patio and eat, go out to dinner and like, right. And he doesn't want to do that. But he likes to go people I mean, watch at the yeah. casino at right. 11 o'clock at night. And I'm like, I've been asleep and I'm not interested in <laughs> right. the train but wreck that's that good, is the Because you still casino. feel that you can be individuals. Right. And I think, like you said, a lot of times the relationship problems come into I'm being morphed into I don't know who I am anymore. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And whereas we go out of our way to be like, no, go do that because that's what makes you feel like a person. Right. 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 And not mom all the time right. or wife all the time. Right. right. So keep your individualism, I think, mm -hmm. would be the last point. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Of course. Thank As you it, both it's very dark, much. I know. Wrap yeah, I guess we gotta wrap cold. it up. But I really appreciate you coming on again, and Rodney, I appreciate you coming on. Thank and you. to those of you who are listening, please continue to listen. Send us your comments, questions, or suggestions, and don't forget to check out the videos on the Patreon platform. And again, like always, the videos, excuse me, the opinions and thoughts expressed today are ours and ours alone. Thanks again for joining us for Conversations with Collins. And don't forget, I really did go to the 24th grade. <clears throat> Thank you. And you're going to have to put an E next to this one, too. <laughs>